They're not interested. My kids don't give a fuck about that. That was your baggage, Dad. That's not our baggage. Okay? But when I go to the school, I used to think that I used to like walk seven miles to school, three and a half blocks to <laughs> between, between here and there. But I mean, it's, you know, I, it seemed like miles to me. But in those days, you could let your kid walk to school. You know, now I'm told you can't let your kids walk to school. You got to walk into school or drive them to school, etc. But, um, you know, I got, you know, I got in a lot of trouble there. I got in a lot of trouble. And my parents had the presence of mind, even though we couldn't afford it because my dad was a cop, to, uh, we moved to a, a better neighborhood uh, and, um, where I had more or less, it's funny, you move when the kid's 10, 12 years old, for a second chance. Now that's hard to believe in today's world. It just is. But when I talked to my cousin, who didn't get that, you know, where would I be vis-a-vis -vis where he is now and his kids and his grandkids, etc. But I, as far as I've come, I still feel, not guilt's not the right word, that I've left so much on the table. Now there's my dad when he was 90. Still looks pretty good, lucid. Yep. And uh, he had just stopped playing golf about that stage. The richest heritage a young man can have is to be born into poverty. Napoleon Hill, that's me. And Sally, who was said last night, who was poorer than me. But we've argued 10, 15 years about who's poor. And I finally gave in and acquiesced after I talked to her mother and I, you know, and etc. But it's funny how parents, her mother can't believe that Sally remembers their poverty. Sally remembers it like it's this morning. Her mother says it's not possible that she can remember that. She was just a little girl. But we remember. Just like I remember that beating I described. I remember the bad things I did as a, you know, as a little kid. When they tell me at high school, here's your diploma, get the fuck off campus. And I say, I'm going to burn this fucking school down. It's, you know. And then when I, I think I told you, about the same time I was in the front page of the LA Times, my 20-year my high school reunion came up. So when I'm, sh I was master of ceremonies, and so I'm standing there in a three-piece linen suit like Red Butler from the Gone with the Wind, and I'm shaking everybody's hand as they come in. Hi, I'm Dan. How are you? So I get up on the stage <clears throat> and I'm saying, welcome, this is 30 years ago, welcome to your 20-year uh, uh, high school reunion, yada, yada. And I said, Dan who? I said, Dan Pena. Nah, Dan Pena died from a drug overdose. Dan Pena died in Vietnam. Dan Pena died in a shootout with police in East L.A. Dan. I said, well, now Dan Pena's standing right here. Because they all assumed I'd be dead. They all assume. And that's why when I tell you, the only goal my dad had, my dad didn't have a goal for me to go to college. He didn't have a goal for me to graduate from high school. My only goal that my dad had was for me to stay alive to the age of reason. And he wasn't sure if that was going to be 20, 30, 40, or 50. And I've told you, the last time I got arrested, February 10th, 1977, I was 31 and a half years old. So, and my, I told you about my cousin's goal. So when I see you guys that had infinitely better starts in life than I did, infinitely better, no comparison, and I see that you haven't accomplished what even I did by the time I was in my late 20s, 30s, 40s, and even 50s, I know what you're capable of. That coupled with the fact that I've seen so many kids, and again, I call you all kids, achieve so much, I know better than you do what you're capable of if you're willing to make the sacrifices. If you're willing to make the sacrifices. You know, when you think about getting tired and you see somebody yawn, what happens? You yawn, right? Okay. Now, when you think about getting rich, building wealth, what happens? You fucking get wealthy. And then you can do good, as I said. 
for the London Reelers. Then you can do good. Get wealthy. You don't like global warming. You don't like malaria. You don't like AIDS. Go make a lot of fucking money like Gates did. And do something about it. Not flap your fucking lips like a cunt. And in a smaller way, that's why Sally and I support three orphanages, a, uh, a mission in um, Sri Lanka, and a school in Rwanda. And a scholarship in East L.A. And probably more stuff as time goes on. Time goes on. So, I mean, you have the capability. The real question is, do you have the desire? Because I get you to do what you don't want to do to be what you want to be. That's what I'm, my speciality, as they say. I get you to do what you don't want to do because it's outside your comfort zone to be what you want to be. Tom Landry, the famous Dallas Cowboy football coach, that's not my saying. He invented that or was first to use it when um, they used to call Dallas Cowboys the American team because uh, uh, back in the 70s and early 80s when he transformed the Dallas Cowboys into a great uh, powerhouse uh, football organization. But that's what I do. Whether you're from China, Mexico, Canada, Germany, Lithuania, Latvia, fucking uh, Estonia, and whatever the fuck these places are. Or Miami, or Fort Lauderdale, wherever. Or Greece. It doesn't matter. The shit works. The shit works. I am living proof the shit works. This is a slide, and basically the bottom line of the slide is, how many have had, how have you had, how many have had at least one dream, daydream in the last year that has come true? This is a survey they did, an executive magazine a few years ago. 71% said their dreams had come true and 29% said no. Then why in the fuck don't you dream more? I still got Santa Claus up there. So I still believe in Santa Claus. In most cases, I am the Santa Claus. But at almost 70, if I can still dream, God Almighty, what should you be doing? And dreams do come true. And this is the perfect metaphor, yesterday's dreams are today's realities. Or today's dreams are tomorrow's realities. For those of you that can think a little ahead. But the bottom line is, and when we talk about goals and affirmations in the next couple of days, this was mine. And each one of you, you know, Peter Sage lives in uh, Dubai now on that island, what do you call it? Uh, the, palm. the Palm. I mean, uh, Klaus Kleinfeld is the CEO, chairman of uh, Alcoa. Rick Scott is the governor of fucking Florida. I mean, it happens. It happens. It absolutely fucking happens. But you can't have a dream come true unless you have a dream. I believe that's in South Pacific. I'm not positive. I think it is, though. Uh, in the song in South Pacific. But it's like I said, you know, I, I don't like Obama's politics, but I have a lot of admiration for his balls and bodacious dreams to be the first black president. You know, for him to say that when he was a, a pot-smoking fucking kid in, in high school and college, I mean, that's pretty fucking big. And it came to fruition. So what are your dreams? What are you, you know, what are you going to use QLA for as a stepping stone? Why are you here? Especially now that we've had almost two full days of it. What are you, how are you going to use QLA to further your dreams for you, your family, or for whoever? That's the question. And these are the things that we're going to define over the next four days in some, in, you know, in, in some great detail. And again, you don't have to be me. 
There's two ends of the uh, leadership continuum, two ends of the success continuum. There's me, General Patton, Attila the Hun, Genghis Khan over here, <clears throat> and there's Henry Kissinger, Jesus Christ, Klaus Kleinfeld on this end. There's two ends of the continuum. You know, most of you are at this end of the continuum, not to equate you with Jesus Christ, that's for sure, but I mean, most of you are at this end of the continuum, or within 5 or 10% of that end of the continuum, and 95% of all the high-performance people are at this end of the continuum. I can add Pope Francis now on, on that end of the continuum. So what are you going to use, or how are you going to use, QLA and what you've learned to further enhance your dreams? That's the question. Okay, that's it, YouTubers. <laughs>